Andy, thanks for having me. Looking forward to the conversation. Perfect. So, uh, Andy, hopefully you won't take offense to this, but you have been in the industry uh, for a long time, uh, an industry uh, veteran. Um, I'm just kind of interested if you could kind of cast your mind back to kind of when you started and just to kind of give our kind of uh, people kind of watching this like an idea about what kind of tech the sector was using then. And it, it's a it's a great question. And, and tomorrow on September 15th will actually be the start of my 40th year. So you are right. I've been been doing this for a very long time. And, and as I think through that journey, you know, one of the things that I debate often with the analysts that cover the sector of engineering and construction is, is all too often you hear that engineering construction firms are under investing. In fact, I, I love the slide when I see it in conferences where they rank engineering and construction uh, technology spend below farming and hunting. And no disrespect to farming and hunting, but but I disagree with that. You know, I, I believe you have to look at the sector in two categories. Look, look at what the engineering firms have done for years as far back as to when I started. Um, and then you have to look at the other side, right? Look at the construction. So, you know, if I think back to those days at Michael Baker International, we were using software for roadway design, geometry, uh, calculating stormwater flow, assisting in bridge and structural designs, and even as much as going into GIS, geographic information systems and technologies you know, capabilities, just to name a few. And, and that's mm -hmm. in the early 80s. So I think on the engineering side, there's always been a technology adoption. But on the other side of that equation is construction. And, and you know, I kind of lived it firsthand. My, my father, uh, who was in the construction trades his entire career, fellow that worked really hard um, with no technology. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, it was brute force, Andy. It was you know, how, how much can you install in a day? How many block can you lay in a day? You know, how much steel could you erect in a day? So I, I think I think for me, I think the advancement of technology and the engineering side of the business has always been, you know, embedded um, on the construction side. Obviously, what we've seen since the early 80s is, is pretty tremendous in, in the capabilities that are out there. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of look to kind of where we are now in kind of 2023, kind of what's your view on the kind of the sector's um, adoption of technology um, and kind of maybe what might we be able to do to increase that? Yeah, and I think it's, again, if we look at it on both sides, right, look at look at the engineering, the engineering teams that are out there and, and the adoption of virtual design and construction building information modeling, digital twins, um, and various visualization tools on top of more advanced engineering design software. Again, uh, I think you know th there's incredible technology and adoption on the engineering side. On the construction side, I think what's interesting to me and what I've seen over these 40 years, I think the last time that I looked, I think there's somewhere around 4,600 companies that market themselves as construction technology software. I mean, it's an incredible amount of tech out there. To me, I think from a consumer, if I was on the other side of the equation and not with Contruent, I think it would be really an overwhelming opportunity to say, what, what tool should I be using? I mean, there's a lot of point solutions out there. So for me, I think we flooded the market, especially on the construction side with a lot of point solutions. But if you walk a construction site today, you will see technologies for material readiness. And I kind of like to expand that, not only materials management, but making sure the material is ready for install, where it is in that journey, in that life cycle from fabrication all the way through installation. The other thing I get excited about is prog progress capture, right? I, I think that the ability to track what has been installed and down yeah. to centimeters um, is going to really, really help the, the industry. And it, it, it can be done simplistically through cameras, drones, um, you know, many ways to capture progress, I think is huge. I think surveillance is, is something that, you know, many of the job sites, and, and I try to do a site walk at least once a month, 
I think the surveillance capability on these massive sites is super important. Um, making sure we know who's in on site, who's not on site, um, making sure those those sites are safe um, and in safety. Um, a, a lot of great tech out there around monitoring the safety activity uh, on those on those projects. So, <laughs> so I, I don't think there's a construction site that I visited in the last four or five years that don't have one of those technologies deployed. And that's exciting to see, especially on the <laughs> construction side. OK, perfect. Um, so you might have kind of touched on them in your in your last answer, but I kind of wondered, is there kind of a particular type of tech or kind of element of tech that you kind of think has the biggest impact to have a positive change on the industry? Yeah, I think we step back from technology for a minute. I mean, all too often, you know, I think everybody gravitates to the software. But for mm -hmm. me, if I look at what is happening in prefabrication, and modular construction techniques. I mean, it, it's really having a tremendous impact on the industry. I think running up to the pandemic, we saw a lot of companies really embracing the prefab modular construction. Then pandemic comes, supply chain issues get very, very difficult. And I think it pulled back a bit. But now um, there are many massive data centers here in the US that are using modular construction techniques. So that gets me excited. I, th I think we'll we'll see more of that um, all over the world um, from, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a military installation, a military base, a data center, and, and quite frankly, all over vertical construction, uh, you're, mm -hmm. you're seeing, you know, more prefab and modular. I think on the software side, I think, as you said, I, I, I mentioned it earlier, progress measurement, quantities capture, and really getting under supply chain planning right i think that's there's not a site that i visit um in in my you know my site walks that there isn't some sort of supply chain issue material costs are very high all over the world we know that yeah. uh, on time delivery of materials and in just those logistics um you know when i talk to superintendents um, there's still waste. I mean, it's better than it was when my dad obviously was was building here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but there's still a lot of waste on job sites. So I think that supply chain planning and the logistics of that, you know, the, those materials on site, I think there's uh, there's going to be some really good improvements in the industry. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so not a sort of going back right to the start of your career, but kind of going back a little bit earlier, kind of one of the things that you've done is you co-founded Oracle's Vertical Industry Labs. Um, I just kind of, could you share with us kind of what that experience was like and were there any kind of particular learnings that you took out of that? Yeah, Andy, for me, I kind of bucket my career in, in into two two segments, right? So it was the, the project work that I did for the first 25 years and there's probably three or four projects in that portfolio that I'm very, very proud of, right? And then on the technology side, I would definitely put the the Oracle Industry Labs in something that that I was very proud of doing. We had a unique opportunity, um, you know, five years ago. We 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 had the opportunity to build what was a simulated work site in Chicago. Andy, mm -hmm. you know how hard it is to get on job sites. You know, it's, yeah. it's hard, it's hard, especially, a, you know, a software provider, a solution provider. So what we wanted to set out to do is really create a simulated work site and have our customers and potential customers and, and partners have an environment that simulated a work site. And, and that really got the program started. Um, since then, we, we've had a tremendous acceptance in the U.S. in our Chicago lab. And we've built a wonderful facility there. Um, started a, 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 an experience lab in the U.K. And that experience is from when an individual would leave their home and start that journey into their office or start that journey into another destination. What is that experience? Are they on a train? What do they need along that way? So very immersive experience. Uh, listen, I, I think we've, you know, we're, my team back at Oracle, we're super excited about not only the, the ecosystem that we built, bringing customers and partners uh, together um, was, you know, it, it was, it was amazing. Um, the one thing that one of the original design intents, and this is a big issue, especially here in the US, is getting young people 
interested in the trades. Um, yeah. So it was my whole life, Andy. I mean, as I, as I mentioned earlier, my, my dad was in the construction trades for 50 years. And in the U.S., there, it, it is really hard to find craftspeople. And in fact, many of the craftspeople on jobs today are coming in from other countries. So one of the design intents I had for the lab was how do we get vocational? How do we get high school, how, you know, younger people to come into the labs, see that technology and construction is really cool and get mm -hmm. them excited about about the trade? So that that is something that was near and dear to me. And, it's just a great experience. I think uh, it, it exceeded my expectations um, on not only the funding that we received from the corporation, but also the recognition that we got from, uh, you know, from from our customers and partners. Mm -hmm. No, that's fantastic. I think that's a that's a problem not just in America. I think that's a problem all over the world, isn't it? In terms of kind of. Uh skilled labor shortage and trying to as you say trying to kind of get younger people excited in the industry um so sort of changing tack kind of slightly kind of in your kind of current role obviously one of the things you're focused on is uh kind of mega projects i wonder if you could give us any practical examples about how technology has kind of helped manage um some of these different projects yeah Eddie, for for me it's why i joined Contrument, right I, I think what you know when i was going through the you know the due diligence of of leaving Oracle and, and coming and join joining the team at Contruent. It, it really, for me, it all starts with the project control center, right? If if you're on a mega project, you have to have the methodology and techniques in place that give you an opportunity to be successful. So for me, at the center, like how do we manage cost, change, scope, schedule? And, and really to enable these project control centers with Contruent Enterprise, which is truly the core cost engine for mega projects. But more importantly, surrounding that core with real-time monitoring, monitoring technologies, right? Sensors, cameras, drones, and then providing those project managers um, on these mega projects with the analytics they need to really have the insights uh, to improve project performance. Most of the big EPCs, EPCMs that I work with, they all have tremendous capabilities around data and analytics. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard, you're hard pressed to find some, an organization that doesn't have, you know, a data lake that they're, they're putting in their schedule data, they're putting in their cost data, they're trying to find patterns in that data. Um, I believe, you know, as AI improves, uh, evolves, enhances, I, I think you'll see those large organizations running AI over their data and giving them predictions. I mean, I think that's that's the one thing that I believe if we get more standardization on how we deliver projects, the the value of the data that we're able to generate and those predictions will be truly tremendous. I think we're a ways away. I think we have a lot, a long way to go. I, I did a, a project years ago where we took every high rise construction project in Chicago mm -hmm. and we looked at the schedules and there there wasn't enough similarity in the way the schedules were built to actually glean um, relevant data because everyone does their schedules and their WBSs and their CBSs differently. So I think some standardization yeah. at the center of cost controls is going to be key. I think rounding the question out for me, you know, I'm seeing a lot of adoption around advanced work packaging. I mean, that's been around industrial for years, right? That's nothing new for, you know, people that have been in the industrial construction space. But I'm seeing AWP and the best practices of AWP really extending outside of, of industrial. Again, I mentioned it earlier, we, we've got to get better telemetry and insights on supply chain, right? I think the better we get at understanding that supply chain and the management of that supply chain is key. Following on that is materials readiness. Uh, I, I, again, um, materials better now than they were 18 months ago, but materials mm -hmm. were scarce, right? It was hard to even get the materials you need uh, to finish your project. And then as we talked about kind of rounding out the question, uh, we had a huge labor issue. Um, mm -hmm. And it is, I, I don't really don't care what size project you're managing from small to mega, 
the, the labor shortage, and, and I'll speak for, you know, for my country here in the U.S., it's daunting. Um, just what we're doing, what we're doing to actually get labor, trades labor onto, onto site. Um, we're, we're definitely doing some ac acrobatics to do that. Okay, perfect. Could I just ask you, so one of the things you mentioned there was the potential kind of role of AI. Can I just kind of ask you kind of, do you think kind of how exciting is that and kind of what potential might that have for the future? I think the industry, for me, I think there's tremendous potential. I think there's two things that have to drive it, right? One, many organizations believe that their data and, and their process to generate that data is part of their competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. So, it, and it's something that has plagued the industry as long as I've been in it. It's, we have to get multiple organizations and, and multiple owners and multiple EPCs and EPCMs contractors to want to benefit from all the data there is a tremendous amount of data that sits in this industry so understanding nominizing that data and and putting it to work for us is really critical so i think mm -hmm. there needs to be a little bit of hey I, i'd like to opt in and and use my data to help drive the better you know the better insights across industries and, and verticals that's you know for me that's one and I think there's a lot of people that are still in the wait and see. As mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, a lot of these firms have incredible data warehouses. It's their data, but how does it compare with other data? And I think that's the that's the danger of if, if you keep it all in house and you're trying to glean data from your organization. Yeah. Is your baseline right? Is your are your KPIs right? Right. Or are you just managing your own firm? And you're not looking at some of the other best practices that are out there. I think there's tremendous potential. Um, I, I know it's something I, I spent a lot of time in, in uh, nights and weekends looking at how other industries are benefiting from it. But uh, you know, just yesterday it, here in Washington D.C., there was a you know there was a uh, a Senate hearing about regulations on AI. I, I, that worries me. Uh, anytime mm -hmm. the government wants to come in and regulate how you know a, an advancing technology like AI is being used, but we'll see. We'll see. I think it's early days.